Hi, this is Rob Bunger from Schneider Electric, and I'm the co-chair of the Open Standard for Data Center Availability Workgroup within the Green Grid. And I want to take a few minutes to introduce you to the OSDA tool. Now, if you never heard of OSDA, if you look in the upper right-hand corner of the tool, you'll see a link to resources. So I highly encourage you to check out the white paper as well as the web webcast, which will give you some background on the OSDA initiative. From the splash screen, to get into the tool, you click the uh, triangle right here, and this will get you to the home screen. Now, before I get into the mechanics of the tool, I would like to give you an introduction into what's behind the numbers of OSDA. Now, OSDA is based upon uh, three different models. The energy sources are modeled using a probability distribution function of the frequency of outages compared to the length of each outage. And the great thing about this is as we model different lengths of energy storage within the tool, we're able to apply this to the PDF and figure out what the downstream availability is. Subsystems are modeled using Monte Carlo simulation, and we also use reliability block diagrams to pull the subsystems together. Then all this goes into uh, translated into an OSDA scale, uh, which goes from zero to 10. Now the, uh, what this allows you to do is to uh, compare and con contrast different design architectures and different sources against each other and see how they uh, compare to each other in a relative fashion. So the whole purpose of OSDA is to look at alternative designs and alternative energy sources and see how they stack up against traditional sources uh, so that hopefully we can uh, encourage new ways to design data centers. And this is going to happen very early in the business cycle in an exploratory phase uh, before the design phase happens. Now, we have benchmarked it against a lot of the designs that people are familiar with. And you can see down on the OSDA scale here, it goes from basic non-redundant, basic redundant, concurrently maintainable, and fault tolerant. So you can see here, concurrently maintainable uh, translates to about an OSDA score of eight. As we go back to the, uh, the dashboard, over on the right-hand side, you'll see that there's some numbers already here. And we preloaded the tour, tool with a concurrently maintainable design. And so there, that's where you see the overall site is an 8.1. And we'll get into these scores in a minute. On the left-hand side, we have the inputs to the facility, the energy source, the water source, and the data telecom. The stuff in green are modules, which you can go in and configure. The ones in gray are ones that we hope to develop in the future. Inside the dotted box is the data center facility and its subsystems of facility power, facility cooling, and the IT network. And the box here towards the bottom uh, gets into offsite redundancy. And then the results are on the right hand side. So let's get in and I'll just show you quickly each module. Under energy source, you see that we have a primary, a secondary, and also energy storage. We have loaded up a typical scenario of grid typical with a standby generator. And as you click on the grid here, you can see that you have different options from the grid to fuel cells and uh, wind turbine, etc. Now, even on grid custom, uh, here you can actually customize your probability distribution function. You can uh, pick the number of annual statistical hours of outage and, and distribute where, you, where those outages occur in duration. I'm going to go ahead and change this back to typical. And then secondary energy source, standby generator. We have a fuel cell there and different configurations of generator. Okay, so this gives us an energy source currently of a 6.3. Let's check out the other modules. Facility power. We've broken up the electrical distribution into three major sections. Backbone distribution, which is where your input substation is going to happen, and that, that primary switch gear. Low voltage distribution and the UPS there, and the branch distribution. In pretty traditional architectures is all we have modeled right now, but you can go into each one of these and, and change them around. So you could see the concurrently maintainable type of design is, is defaulted, but you can go down and check basic non-redundant. You can see that the score on the right changes and, and, and what it does to the overall site score. And I'll leave it there, concurrently maintainable. Low voltage distribution, here's where the UPS is. You can actually change the runtime of the UPS, and it's interesting to see how that changes, especially if you have a, a utility grid, which might not be that great, or maybe uh, not a redundant generator system. You'll see an effect on the overall site. And then branch distribution also, you know, two corded devices, single cord device, etc. Okay, now let's back out and get to the main page, and we can go into facility cooling. Now here we have a typical chilled water system modeled. 
Uh, and that's the only choice. Uh, we hope in the future that we're able to model other types of cooling architectures. But again, it's from basic non-redundant to fault tolerant. And you can see how the score changes as you select different models and its effect on the overall site. And then the last module that you can go in and alter is this offsite redundancy. And all this is is a very simple way that you can kind of take and look at it. If I have an application that has the ability to take advantage of multiple sites, whether you have the app and it's and it's running concurrently in the cloud or another site, uh, what would that application score be? And so that's what this number here is, the 9.9 .9 in, in the case. So if you have two sites that were an 8.1, that'd be 9.9. .9. And this is active-active, right? They're, they're really running at the same time. You pick none, and all it does is take it away. So this is really here for a demonstration purposes, uh, because when you go back to the main page, you're going to notice that we're not currently modeling the telecom and the IT network. So the design of those particular systems is not taken into account in that, that number. Now, I want to run through one quick scenario before we close out. It's kind of interesting. If you go into the energy source, again, we have this facility that's designed currently as a traditional concurrently maintainable data center. And let's say you're deploying something at the edge. It's a small data center at the edge, and it turns out that the location that you, you need to install cannot use a generator either from an emissions or a sound perspective. And so you take a look and it says, well, what does that do to your score if you have to put none here, right? So it really takes that energy source down to 1.9 and your overall facility is a 2.4. So you're at the mercy of how good your grid is. Now, interestingly, if the application that's running uh, is in a, another site, a different location, potentially with a different grid, um, that, uh, that redundancy is still pretty good. But, but you know, the, the chances of having that application redundancy currently is uh, probably limited to not, not a ton of apps. So what if we put energy storage here? So you can configure here. We've had it up to, uh, you know, here 90 minutes, an hour and a half. And uh, that goes up to 4.5. That's a good improvement. And let's see what happens when we go to four hours. Now this gives you a 7.2. It's not quite the eight that we had with the uh, kind of unlimited runtime of a, a redundant standby diesel generator, but it's still pretty good. And so it gives you some options and allows you to think of uh, what your possibilities are at this particular site. And now some of these might not be financially achievable now, uh, but the hope is, is that uh, as we look into the future, there's going to be more possibilities for different sources and different architectures. So that's all I have for now. I hope this is useful. And uh, if this type of video is helpful, we'll get into more, uh, more scenarios here within the tool and describe how they work. So thank you very much.